For News OK, I'm Dave Morris here at the Pupco Studios with, uh, let's see, Rick and Nick for our weekly update. Uh, it's Rick Green and Nick Trigakis from the Oklahomans Newsroom, local editor and assistant local editor. And what we want to do on this show uh, every week is kind of provide a look ahead to some of the top stories that the newspaper is working on. Fellows, thanks for your time today. I appreciate you guys joining me. And I'll shut up now and let you guys explain what does a local editor do? Well, primarily we're in charge of courts, city council, breaking news, just the whole run of news you would consider for the front page and, and the state page. Just whatever is going on in Oklahoma at that time, really. Gotcha. And the newsroom is set up where, you know, there's sports desk, business desk, news desk, and that's what these guys focus on is that news desk, the local uh, stories that you will consider or see on your front page. All right, so let's get into it this week. And one of the top stories for this week will be whether President Barack Obama declares a state of emergency or a disaster area because of the tornado damage. And uh, tell us more of what you guys are seeing on this story. Well, tornado coverage is going to take prominence this week. Obviously, we've had uh, major tornadoes come through. We've had six people dead. We've had dozens of homes and businesses destroyed. So we're going to follow up on that story. We're going to try to reach the people who have been most affected and survivors of those who've been lost. And a big part of it, too, is going to see how it plays out in terms of a disaster declaration from President Obama. And why is that important? Governor Mary Fallon declared a disaster emergency uh, for 12 counties already, but why is the federal level significant? It's, right. it's important because there are going to be a lot of the victims out there who may have uninsured losses and uh, a lot of ways that they can recoup their their property and their expenses and finances is through that federal declaration from the president through FEMA. So, so it really does make a, a pretty big impact, big difference. It's, it's huge for them and what happens is the FEMA uh, crews go through and look at the damage, look at how much of that was uninsured and they'll make a determination that they give to the governor and from there the governor will ask the FEMA and the White House really uh, for that federal disaster declaration which would free up low, in, low interest loans uh, grants, things of that nature, to those who lost homes and businesses. And if you haven't been following our coverage online, the Oklahoma has done a, an outstanding job of being in Woodward, frankly, right after the storm happened. You can follow all that footage online at newsok.com, a video of photos and really well-written, compelling stories. All right, moving on as we have a couple other stories to address. This week, of course, is the anniversary of the, of the bombing, and Thursday is the 17th anniversary of that bombing. And what do you guys have planned on that story? Well, we're going to be uh, out at the site of the memorial on Thursday morning. The annual remembrance ceremony is 8.55. Uh, Governor Fallon, Mayor Mick Cornett are going to be there. We're going to have the annual uh, observance of the 168 seconds of silence to remember the victims. Uh, they're going to open up the field of chairs. and. We'll have full coverage of that, uh, like you would expect, photos, videos, all that for Fridays, Oklahoma. Also, the names of all 168 victims will be read, often by family members or rescuers or first responders who are at the scene will read those names as part of that annual observance. Gotcha. And a third story we want to talk about, the Capital Preservation, Preservation Commission, I can't even read the prompter, will meet. And what are they going to be talking about, guys? They are going to be talking about the, uh, the physical state of our Capitol building right now. If you go down to the Capitol on the south side, it's kind of blocked off right now. There's scaffolding isn't it? Yeah. covering the entrance to, to prevent uh, visitors from being hit with falling limestone <laughs> from the facade of the Capitol. Which so they, they think that's not a good thing. You don't like that to happen, yeah. probably. So uh, they are going to be talking about ways to finance repairs on the Capitol. Um, something that legislators have thrown out have been bond issues. That's been met with mixed results. Um, anytime you talk about taking uh, state money and finding a way to, to make repairs, obviously there's going to be a lot of discussion on both sides. The, the concern has been the debt that would be incurred by fixing that building through a bond measure of $200, 000, $200 million. Uh, and, and other state buildings have problems as well. And one thing they've discussed is making it an incremental bond measure, so over a three-year period. Um, and that's one of the things they'll be talking about going forward. Gotcha. Fellas, thanks for your time. Much appreciated. Be sure to look for those stories, of course, coming up this week in the Oklahoma, and you can find them online at newsok.com as well.